Welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome to this great evening of um, you know the uh, the Malahat Nation um, going through their annual report, the 2019-2020. Uh, we're happy to have you guys, and we're happy to be uh, present, being able to present this. Uh, as we know, the um, COVID has changed many things, but you know we want we want to keep uh, getting our information out there and letting everybody know that you know there's still things going on and. Melhab is still moving forward, so thank you guys for joining us this evening. <clears throat> I'm Chief George Harry, and I'm I'm very happy to be here presenting today. Uh, we we we've, we've been through so many things this year, and you know, as, as we know through the pandemic, it it's made things a little harder. But yet we are still here. We are still making making movement. Uh, we are still. Malahat is still growing. So, you know, today uh, we're happy to be here to say, you know, what, we're going to do our presentation. We're, we're going to talk a little about what, what has gone on. And as for me, I will be talking about lands, fisheries, early childhood education, and trading. So I'd like to pass it on to my fellow councilman to, to say a few words also. Good evening, everyone. Um, Council of Board Harry, and I will be talking about. We're not doing it right away, right? <laughs> Communications and economic development. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Steve here. I hope everybody's doing well and enjoying this weather right now. Um, I'll be talking about community programs and kids education, our health programs and post-secondary. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Cindy here um, and I will be talking about housing and administration, governance and community infrastructure. And I'd like to make one more comment that if anybody has any questions, to please leave it on the Facebook page and we, we will uh, answer you in a timely fashion. So as you go through in the beginning of the annual report, uh, there is a message from Chief and Council that we, we would love for you to read. And um, this is something we do every every year. So, I mean, please take a look through it and uh, any feedback would be great. And we also have some pictures here that, you know, of some of the things that were going on. Uh, we also have a picture of membership and population for Malahat. So please take a look at that also. Uh, we also have the age demographics. Um, and I, I, will, I will leave this to Council Board. I'll be talking about the sidewalk that is underway and everything that has to do with our sidewalk, which would be, I guess our, our welcome building is, is on the go. Uh, the road is paved and we are, we can bring anyone up for tours, I believe the Fridays, if anyone wants to take part on that. Uh, the business park, I believe that um, we will be Paving road within the next few weeks. Uh, the, the marine boat launch I, will be taking place later this year. 
Uh, Indigenous Bloom opened up in April. We have uh, 10 jobs for members, and I believe they're doing well. And Nelson Environment Partnership took over the site of Quantum Murray, and we have one member working for Nelson. The Malahat Studios concept has continued to advance with the expectations that feasibility will start in the coming year. So Malahat has um you guys have lost the screen. Yeah. Did you go again? Okay. Environment and fisheries. Uh, we plan and implemented programs to actively improve the environment and increase species population, which is environmentally and culturally implement important. We are enforcing fishery violations, removing direct marine equipment from the Sandy Inlet, and that's what they started when we started doing buoy surveys. So, you know, illegal fishing traps uh, actually have been confiscated and they are making uh, Malahat known on the waters now. Um, ensuring future generations have robust affirmation of their rights and title as defined by Douglas Treaty and Modern Treaty and removing barriers to exercise these rights. Especially in the marine environment, boat launch, marine training, and safe equipment. We've increased Malahat presence on the water to assert Malahat's rights in Thailand uh, in the marine territory through documenting past use, facilitating present use, and planning to, for future use. And uh, that's, uh, I've actually mentioned the buoy surveys, which is, which is a big thing for the inlet. So you know, I'm, I'm fairly happy about what is going on and how much Malahat is participating in the water. And 12 Malahat members graduated from community entrepreneurship training program through BC Work, our work BC in partnership with UBEC. Malahat has defended Malahat's groundwater rights from the province, protected Malahat's future treaty lands from outside interests protected Malahat's Aboriginal forestry interests with the province. And just a few examples of more than 120 consultation requests related to Malahat's interests. We also drafted the cannabis law to protect the Malahat nation and bring jobs and income to Malahat. So the community programs and kids education. So we, one thing great for us was the cultivate, we cultivated the community gardens. It's been a great, great um, program to come out of the community. We have three members working on that and we're moving forward. We hope that to get um, more out of it and be able to distribute it to all our members. Um, uh, we, we ran a social assistance program to benefit our Malahat members. Uh, we ran the couples program, parent top, play group, kids program, fitness groups, and many more, such as um, with the children and youth programs, there'll be more programs to start in October. Uh, we have the skills upgrading, what is not what is now called open doors to new opportunities with Seth, Seth and Patricia. We also have cult, culture programs and activities. And um, brought our traditional culture activities to community programs. Uh, worked with local schools to support Malahat students and being 
bring in culture events back to the schools and it's a good working relationship we have with this school and we continue to work with them to make things better for our children. So the health programs, um, coordinated medical and dental appointment and health planning for our children, families and elders, provided counseling and referrals as well as support groups. Ran elders luncheon, good food box, boxes, weekly elders day out and more programs for elders. Created cultural Tuesdays videos to share Malhat culture with the greater community. And I would like to invite more people out to participate in that. So if you have teachings from elders, from your grandparents, don't feel free to reach out to our, to Dan at Malhat Nation and, and just um, our, other things we have is mental health and addiction, elder care, chronic illness, diabetic care, health promotion and injury prevention, nursing and med medical transportation. And I encourage everybody to come up here and to use our new facilities and everything that we have to offer here. Uh, we're going to have start program and any programming for children under five plus transition to the early early learning department for the community programs and in addition ECE was hired to help facilitate daycare built and outdoor playground space completed and furnished in March of 2020 and as of now the daycare is up and operational uh, the licensing process was started so that the Malahad kids can go to the lic licensed care, child care facility. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to see that our daycare is finally starting to make way and uh, uh, create more, more ability for uh, families to go to work and go to school and do the things that they, you know, to move forward themselves. So, you know, we're pretty happy with what is going on at this point. and post-secondary. So uh, first of all, I'd just like to congratulate um, Ethel on finishing her professional cook one. And it's been really good for our post-secondary. Um, Malahat students spent our full financial allotment for the first time in years. And we now have a wait list, so no money was sent back to the federal government. For example, we have five people doing the carpentry program at BIU. We also have two members taking the ECE program at BIU and one member taking the healthcare assistant program. And we have many more doing other stuff. And I would also like to encourage everyone to, if they know what they want to do or explore any programs, um, to give our post-secondary program a call. Thank you. <clears throat> Housing and administration. Um, we've um, streamlined housing and to bring the community faster repairs. Um, we uh, well, Shannon and Zashina at the time started um, <clears throat> formalized repair and complaint system, uh, completed construction for the two and three, or uh, the three bedroom and four bedroom duplexes, um, developed a housing policy for 20, 2020 and 2021, uh, we making progress on the eight plex construction. Uh, we're hoping that it will be completed by the end of 2020.
Community infrastructure. We completed the community infrastructure service plan to support the ongoing management of assets and services for the community infrastructure. Uh, we're beginning planning for Malahat Nation's water system, prepared for submission with the support of urban systems. Um, created full-time salary uh, paid positions for five nation members. <coughs> creating work crews based to support both infrastructure and community housing services. Uh, we completed the constructions for the health unit, daycare, and recreation center. Communication. We have a website designed for Malahat members. We encourage all members to familiarize themselves with what is available and let us know if there is something else you'd like to see made available. We will be adding the staff directory to the website, portraits, bios, job descriptions, and contact information. Facebook is the best way we have communicate with our members at the moment. We know not everyone uses it. That's why we are working on designing an app for the website that we can use to communicate outside of Facebook. We also created a community group called Malahat Health Connection so members can join and share comments posts and pictures with community and staff. A lot of work has been put to protect nation and member data. We have improved our security to ensure that important data such as health information and financial information is secured. Treaty, we have, we have done many open house and community meetings and land tours, family dinners and presentations at community events. Significant progress made on the draft of Malahat Constitution and uh, I feel Malahat should be proud of that because our, uh, all our members are out there um, making this, making the Constitution happen for Malahat and its treaty. We negotiated the forgiveness of all negotiation support loans. This is amounts to millions of dollars that we no longer have to pay back. Working with the province to support the passing legislation formally adopted the principles of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, organized a weekend long youth summit at Bear Mountain for the youth representatives from the different TTA nations to help them learn more about the training process. Uh, governance. We began a comprehensive uh, overhaul of the Malahat law and policies to modernize our government and to bring transfer transparency between the government and the community. Uh, financial administration um, dramatically overhauled and began to repair Malahat's finances, created a proper budget. The this is the first council approved budget in years. Um, so that's a big win for us that we've actually were able to approve a budget that hasn't really done before. So I'm happy with that. Improved and developed uh, internal controls to ensure all Malahat Nation's money is protected and accounted for. Audit was completed on time. Financial statements and special purpose reports are available in the band office for review and online at malahatnation.com. Financial administrative law and policies have also been available on malahatnation.com. Uh, taxation, property taxation established for businesses on Malahat land.
so much sugar. So that is our presentation. And uh, I'm happy that we're able to do this and get this out to the community on time. And uh, I just want to ensure that please, if you have any questions, put it on Facebook and we will be able to answer, answer those at a timely fashion. Um, uh, I, I want to introduce Norm Gardenia next. Hey everyone. Carry on for sure. <laughs> yeah, sorry about the technical issues. Uh, we, I can't uh, share a screen at this point. And this is the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Um, you sure accomplished a lot from an audit perspective, on time and in control. Um, wonderful year. It's a, a pleasure to see the development and what you've gone through over the last year and a half to two years has been absolutely amazing um, for, <clears throat> for your nation. Um, the Audit and Finance Committee, uh, we've had a, a wonderful time dealing with Sheila and Abraham, uh, super to deal with, um, <clears throat> and really adding a lot of, of credibility to, to the operation along with the financial administration law and all the things that have been happening. Um, it's just wonderful. So. I'd like to go through the annual general uh, meeting presentation as in front of you. Um, it is in a slide format and you do have statements, I believe, and they, as just said, they are available in the office to look at if there's any questions. Um, I'll get into the uh, notes later. There's some issues that need to be, uh, or issues that brought up with the notes. Um, so, so the audit outline, uh, we go through the audit process and this is the outline for the session. Independent Auditor's Report, uh, Management's Responsibility. I must apologize, this isn't as exciting as what you just got went through, but we will try, right Venus? And Venus is with us today as well. She's from our office and she's one of the directors and one of the owners. And Venus has been involved in, in the audit as well. And this is just super. So say hello, Venus. Hello everyone. <laughs> and welcome aboard. Um, so we go through the auditor's role, the audit adjustments, and just to be clear, the audit adjustments, so we'll go through that point, but what needs to be made up front is the fact that all of our recommended audit adjustments have been approved and implemented <clears throat> and are reflected in the nation's books. So we make adjustments and recommendations and they're all done, super and on time and in control. Then we'll get into the audit opinion and get into statement of financial position, uh, uh, statement of revenue expenses, notes to the financial statements, and then finally the audit findings report. Good, next. And this is the audit process. It's, uh, and it's had some changes with COVID. So we start with a follow up the audit findings report. That's our recommendations from the previous year. So we start the next year with the recommendations and so many and all of them have been looked after and we work on that on a regular basis uh, with the audit finance committee. Okay, and then we get into audit planning, uh, where we actually plan the audit with uh, your committee to push forward to make sure that our audit is meaningful and that we can do something in a specific area to assist with the process and assist with your controls, it's great. Uh, you do have a financial management um, uh, and a FAL, financial administration law, which is great, and your government's policies are constantly being reviewed, which is a good thing. Uh, preliminary assessment, review and go over the the assessment carry on to the next stage, which is the audit plan. And um, carrying on to the next stage. This part, yeah. And I'm just looking at some notes coming from the audit and finance committee, which is great as I speak, which is super. Then we, we perform the audit and then conclusion and reporting. And then we complete the audit uh, financial statements. And here we are at the AGM and it's not good for me because I look forward to coming over and visit, but with COVID, we can't do that. So we're doing it remotely. So welcome everybody. I wish I was there in the community because I love to see the progress. Carrying on to the independent auditor's report. It outlines responsibilities of management, preparation and fair presentation of financial statements free from material misstatements and going to the next stage outlines the auditor's role to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatements. And that's the key there, free from material misstatements. We're, we're not in 
And all, obviously with COVID, we haven't been there to the extent of, of seeing the day-to-day -day operations. And it's made some changes in the way that we, we approach the audit, et cetera, and will in the upcoming, oh, I would say two to three years at this point. Okay. And the opinion, the auditor express an opinion on the financial statements for sure. <clears throat> then the management's responsibility per se, responsible for preparation of a fair presentation of financial statements as mentioned. And of course, this is based on the uh, applicable accounting standards, reasonable estimates and judgments, key judgments in terms of that magic cutoff period where we're dealing with March 31st, there's judgment included there, reasonable estimates at that point in time. So everything hedge, hinges on the March 31st, uh, 2020 deadline to make sure everything's recorded in the year the way they should be recorded and the accruals are put forward as well as the previous year's accruals are obviously adjusted. And uh, implementation and maintenance of internal controls, which is really cool. Internal controls encompass just about everything. The auditor's role. The role the auditor expects an opinion on the financial statements in a report format based on the evidence collected to determine whether the financial statements are fairly presented in all material respects at one point in time. And that's that key March 31st uh, timeframe that we're dealing with. And the auditor will also provide an audit findings report as mentioned with recommendations based on our findings. And it's very important that that audit findings report are kind of uh, recommendations that are not wish lists, but recommendations that can be uh, fulfilled within the next period. And <laughs> actually your audit findings report has been uh, quite good. We're finding less and less every year and we're kind of stepping up what our recommendations are from year to year. And things are looking very, very good uh, from the nation's perspective, which you'd be very proud of. <laughs> audit adjustments. Again, um, the audit adjustments are um, based on the documents reviewed. Um, and of course, a lot of that's going to be remotely in the upcoming years, makes recommendations for adjustments to clients' records. And we're making adjustments in the way we approach audits. Yes, we've been directed by the Chartered Professional Accountants Association, but we're also taking steps in our own. Our man audit management and uh, planning memos that we're working on right now will have a checklist to follow different checklists. So because we have to do a lot of what we're doing remotely, so that encompasses probably more regular meetings than that what we usually had in um, conducting the audit. But again, as mentioned, we do not have the right to adjust the entity's financial records without the approval of your management. And of course, all the adjustments have been approved and put forward and they're represented as earlier stated. The audit opinion. Whoops. <laughs> There's an unqualified Financial position present fairly in all material respects in accordance with applicable county standards and a qualified opinion, a deviation from the applicable county standards are identified, but still able to form an opinion. And you do have a qualification based on, uh, again, the, the records of your development corporations and so on, which are, are being looked after as we speak and pushing forward for the next year as well. And disclaimer, a denial of opinion the kind of insufficient evidence or sufficient misrepresentations are identified that an opinion cannot be formed at that point. So, this is a consolidated statement of financial position, presents fairly the assets, liabilities, and the non-financial assets and the accumulated surplus of the nation as of March 31st, 2020. So you can see as of April 1st, what your accumulated surplus was, you can see what your cumulative surplus was as of March 31st, 2020. So you've had an increase, which is just super, $1,824,530. And i just love to, if I could, and I would clearly, if I was present in the meeting and you had your members there, I would ask for a round of applause here. This is just super to jump up and things are really, really improving. Um, your your uh, council is doing a, a good job and all management there are doing a great job from our perspective from the financial positions. Carry on. Super. Good job. And this is a consolidated statement of financial position. 
This is extracted right from your statements. Uh, and you can see that the cash and equivalents, et cetera, in the portfolio investments, they're about the same. Uh, accounts receivable uh, have been collected and are quite a bit lower than last year. And that's that timing thing of March 31st. Uh, notes receivable, uh, 37, uh, uh, 37 million. Um, and that is um, uh, basically from Michael, 3.9 from Michael, and carrying on with the duly related parties, uh, et cetera, that is up. And the references to the notes, and if you read, it's kind of difficult to go through a presentation like this without referencing the notes as we go by. Now the notes form an integral part of the financial statements. And again, um, you've got some very long uh, notes and we've added a lot of description to the notes. And again, we're working with the, your audit and finance committee as well as your council to say, again, if there is something in the note that would explain something better in the financial statements, your notes are at a minimum standard. We can certainly add more to that description. And some of your notes do have more description as a result of that process. And then due to related parties is up uh, substantial, due from related parties is up substantial. And in your investment in government business enterprises and government business partnerships, outlined in notes seven and eight. And the federal, federal trust funds uh, down significantly, et cetera, good. And funds held in trust, okay. And those funds are basically held by the finance authority in terms of what amounts to a little bit of security for the loans that are outstanding at that point. Good. The point being March 31st, 2020. And this is a financial assets um, graph and dealing with investments, accounts receivable, notes receivable, related party uh, investments and advances and, and trust funds. Uh, in kind of the pie chart that, that shows where you're at and color code it. Okay, and the next slide. And this is consolidated statement of financial positions at your liabilities, going through the, the bank indebtedness, which is down, and the bank, bank demand loans, which are down. Good thing. Accounts payable are up, and this is where we've got that cutoff procedure of March 31st. So your, all your liabilities are recorded, and that uh, significant amounts are broken out on note 12. And deferred revenue, that's revenue that uh, you've got but you haven't earned at this point. So it's kind of deferred into the next year along with uh, due to related par uh, uh, entities, okay? 6.9 million, all right? And liabilities for government business enterprises and liabilities of government business partnerships, all right? And long-term debt and um, a little bit of an increase in long-term debt and in your promissory notes and the capital lease obligation. So that are, those are the liabilities. In the next slide. And this kind of breaks it out in proportion and percentage, taking into account the amounts payable all the way down to the capital leases. Next slide, please. And consolidated statement of financial position, it's your net debt, and notice that your cap tangible capital assets are up significantly, and that's covered under note 18. And uh, your prepaid expenses, which have, have gone down. So your cumulative surplus, as indicated in the previous slide, is up to 3 million from 1.2 million, a good change in the year and a positive change. Next slide. Consolidated statement of revenue and expenses. We present the source of revenue and expenses by program for the year ended March 31st. There's this so many schedules and as mentioned in, in previous meetings, if you look at your revenue expense schedule by programs, um, this is the summary, but you've got a breakdown in a number of schedules that represent the monies coming in and the monies going out in terms of expenses. This is the monies coming in. And you can see that uh, your um, Indigenous Services Canada, 1.6 million, down from 2.5 million. But bear in mind, we're talking about a budget of 1.5, and this is the budget process that is in place. Great, as opposed to the actual. So your actual is ahead of budget of 1.5, and that's a good thing. And ISC recovery, uh, $67,000 as opposed to 30. 
Uh, so the net amount is what we're dealing with from Indigenous Services Canada. And um, I should point out that they were, when we talked about groundwater and we talked about water uh, issues earlier and the Chief and Council were presenting, there was an announcement, there's gonna probably be some, some monies coming federally for, uh, for uh, initiating groundwater and purification of groundwater on First Nations lands. And it might be something to, to look into. Um, I just heard the, the balance of that discussion coming from the throne speech yesterday. Okay, uh, Canada Mortgage and Housing, up 116,000 from 80,000 the previous year. Uh, we had budgeted 423, but that's basically what we ended up with. And look at your uh, Fisheries and Oceans Canada, 299,000 as opposed to 44,000. First Nation Health Authority, uh, down uh, significantly from the $2.2 million to 853,000 from the previous year. Natural Resources Canada, 108,000 over 83,000 the previous year. And the rest are pretty straightforward, other than getting into the province of British Columbia, where we had, again, a budget of 330,000 and came up with 448,000. Okay, good work in that area. And of course, gaming revenue is $315,000. And we don't know where we're gonna be in the next uh, upcoming year in terms of gaming revenues. But uh, um, we were talking about this at our First Nation Financial Management Board meeting yesterday and also our Aboriginal Financial Officers Conference last week where gaming revenues, they're still discussing how this is going to affect the First Nations communities, but you do have $315,439 in gaming revenue. Funding from First Nations organization, $272,000 as opposed to $134,000. And the net um, loss from government business enterprises um, coming down from the previous year and loss on disposable tangible capital assets being in 2019 and nothing this year. Other revenues, uh, a lot of the uh, other revenues uh, of 3.7 million are up significantly, 2.6 million. And the way to look upon this is, look at the proportion of your other revenues when we get into the graph in terms of where your funding is coming from. Uh, this is quite good. The largest amount owed is basically made up from Trans Mountain, a joint venture with uh, Quantum Murray and Port of Vancouver and also the Gala. Alrighty. And rental income, 163,000 as opposed to 158. And there's your deferred revenue. And the net difference is the prior and the current revenue. So we're showing the uh, each year. Okay. So let's push onwards to the next one. And this is the the uh, graph indicating the percentage breakdowns, which a lot of people like to see. So we introduced these in our previous year and this year's presentation, put some graph work in it, kind of makes it uh, uh, go forward. And uh, next slide, please. Going into expenditures. And again, this is the area where you're looking at your budget compared to what your actuals are and the comparisons for the previous years. Indigenous sir, uh, government services, 1.9 million as opposed to 1.8 the previous year, budgeted per 1.3, so we're kind of up in that area. Uh, health, uh, 752,000 budgeted, 582 spent, which is up considerably from the previous year, and that was discussed in the opening session as well. Housing, budgeted 1.2, 300,000, as opposed to 364 in the previous year. So again, um, you know, we're quite significantly down on that particular budget as well. And uh, education, employment, and training, uh, 944,000 is your budget. And uh, 1, 1 million um, three was spent as opposed to 852 from the previous year, which is great. This is an area where you like to see expenditures, education, employment, and training. It's so very, very important for community development. and. I'm really happy to see uh, that amount of money spent in education, employment, and training. Social development, uh, 702,000 and 680,000 compared to 351, a positive phase on the budget for sure. Economic development, 2.1 million from 1.9 the previous year. And that budget from economic development is almost bang on. That's uh, super management. Uh, community infrastructure, 4.1 million. 277,000 from 235 in the previous year. 
And that budget, I think, was uh, part of the process in terms of not quite finished. And um, with COVID and everything else, and prior to COVID, and even up to the year end, there was a, uh, an issue related to, uh, to this community infrastructure, which was uh, talked about earlier. Ottawa Trust Fund and Housing Reserve, um, no Ottawa Trust Funds uh, for each year, and, but budgeted. Housing Reserve and Environment and Sustainable Development, 199,000 as opposed to 88,000 from the previous year from a budget 374. Spending some time in the budget to understand that this, this is a working process now and it is a budget process that's in place, which is great. And that was mentioned uh, prior to the meeting starting as well. Good. And this is your uh, graph related to uh, expenditures and the percentages of the breakdown and what it amounts to. Okay, and the various figures. And notes to financial statements as talked about earlier, they're so important and um, they are primary for the re uh, readers and to inform the readers. And that's the main reason why notes are, are given. Provide further details about significant accounting policies and details of various balances outlined in the financial statements. Yeah. And the audit findings report. We report includes, uh, in, it, this is in addition to the independent auditor's report, even though the auditor's report has changed over the last uh, two to three years and to become um, quite a bit larger in content, but highlighted in the area of of bringing up the opinions first and then getting into descriptions later in terms of the breakdown of the audit report. But the audit findings report is very, very important because it outlines the audit approach. It outlines materiality. That's kind of the judgment we use in terms of, of how we're testing things. Internal control deficiencies, outlining those. Uh, disagreements with management, clearly none. We've got along super with, uh, with management and your accounting department and Lauren's done a, a great job and we really enjoy working with the Finance and Audit Committee. Um, Malahat is really a, a good example for RHN in terms of, of, of bands that are really uh, coming to play with, uh, with upcoming events in the financial world and risk assessment and all that, and basically being certified and taking advantage of, of the opportunities that are out there, uh, which is really super. You are a model community for us. Um, issued encounter, any issues encountered? Uh, nothing really. Uh, pretty straightforward, and our recommendations. And clearly, we make our recommendations are really taken seriously. I mean, every one of our recommendations made, there's something being done about it. And that is a positive vein. And it makes us feel good as well as auditors because often, you know, we're caught in situations where we're making recommendations and we have to determine, can it be done, can it not be done? And uh, in your case, you're working on everything and taking our recommendations, which make us feel very, very good. And we like to see the progress in your community. Fantastic. Next slide. And thank you very much for your time today. Are there any questions? I kind of ramble through because it's difficult to take questions in this type of a presentation. Uh, so if there are any, um, please uh, shoot. Yeah, and that's our contact information. Over to you, Mr. Chairperson and Doran. I hope I haven't put anybody to sleep. <laughs> oh, good. Dave's back with us. <laughs> Hi, Sheila. Welcome. Good to see you. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It, it, it's good to see that we can um, get this out there in more ways than one, and we're happy to be doing this. So, you know, I, I just want to say thank you again for everybody who come to watch this online and, and uh, get all the great information that is, uh, and all the great things that has happened for Malahat. So uh, I just want to say thank you and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and we will continue to do what we need to do to get Malahat where it needs to go. So uh, have a great evening. Thank you for coming. And please, once again, if you have any questions, leave them on the Facebook page and we will be able to answer them for you. And, and again, Chief and Council, congratulations on a, a very successful year. It's really nice to see the improvements that you've been making and 
and the, the work that you and your staff have been doing. And really, uh, you know, Bayram and I have been working with you for three years and it, it's really evident that you're doing everything that needs to be done to, to take the nation to the next step. So congratulations. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Thank you, Norman Venus. Bye. Thank you, Thank you Lori. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a safe weekend. Bye bye.